All right, I probably did a video on this before, but I want to rebuff it, redo it, and um, you know, rekindle it real quick. Talking about Grandma Rigondeaux, I seen Dan Rayfield kicking him while he was down and talking shit about him like two weeks ago. I see other people continuously bringing him up, saying what happened to him and and re and, and recropping the tweets that he put out there. But people forget though, people forget though that he was the dude that was willing to be great and moved up two weight classes. And the four guys right here was responsible for him having to really strive to be great and really jump up, really jump up, you know, and wait, you know, to be great. People forget that, though. We back with the Boston Clinic and Morrison Boy, CJ Goodfella. People forget that. You forget that Abner Mares, Leo Santa Cruz, Scott Quigg, and Carl Frampton all moved up and wait to avoid rigging down. You forget Leo Santa Cruz was awarded back to Golden Boy and Oscar De La Hoya after the split between him and Al Heyman, and they got some of his fighters back. And Oscar proceeded to make Rick and Don with Leo Santa Cruz, and Leo Santa Cruz called Al Heyman to buy him out of, out of to buy him back out of the Golden Boy contract and get him back out out of over there, out of Golden Boy before he had to fight Rick and Dial. You remember his dad saying a whole bunch of hoe ass bitch shit, saying, "Oh no, you know he's boring. We don't want to fight him." We remember Adam Mars moving up. We remember Scott Quigg moving. We know Carl Frampton a hoe. You know, we know he a hoe. I'm just keeping it real. But people won't talk. They won't talk about that. At least Rigondeaux tried to be great. At least he stepped into the ring with Lomachenko. And he had no choice. Nobody else would fight him. He would have been fighting the, 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 the scum of 122. Because Bob Aaron wasn't putting Jesse Macedonia near him. Nobody else fighters was putting him. He was just fighting mandatories. And not being active. People forget that he wasn't active because guys were scared of him. Oh, he's born, you know, Dan Rayford. Oh, he's born here, this. But at the end of the day, you want to attack the guy in Rigondeaux who wants to be great, who wanted to fight, you know, Santa Cruz, Marrez, Scott Quigg, and Carl Frampton, okay? He wanted to fight those guys, but those guys ran from him and hid behind, behind their promoters. But Rigondeaux is the guy that we getting on because, you know, he, he, he quit versus Lomachenko. You know, you got to start to quit. These guys didn't even start. They didn't want to no smoke with him. And now that he got beat, they still don't want to call his name out. They still don't want no smoke with him. And not only did they make that mistake with Grimmo Rigondeaux, they make a mistake with Gary Russell. They won't even utter this man's name. They won't say Gary Russell's name. Who, who the fuck want to see Marais and Santa Cruz fight again? I don't give a fuck about that fight. Frampton and Santa Cruz, I take it. You know, Mars and Quig, I take it. But at the end of the day, why aren't they trying to fight Gary Russell? Why is Jojo Diaz got to be the one to step up to the plate? I'm just asking. You know? Well, why is these guys continue, continuously to get deep passes, dude? Why? Why? And then all your people doing it in the media, you know, Dan Rayfields of the world, C.V. Kims, and, and them hating ass motherfuckers over, over there. You know, you know, they don't promote the American boxers the right way. They don't, don't oh, they act like the Cuban boxers don't exist. You know, anything with, with melanin, the color in their skin, they act like they don't see it. Okay? Why, why, don't, why don't they talk about these cowards the way they're talking about Rigondeaux? Oh, Rigondeaux, oh, this is the worst thing. Hey, at least he tried. At least he gave an effort. These four guys, the only effort they got was moving up and waiting. And then... When it was rumors that Rigondeaux might come to 126 before he fought Lomachenko at 130, they was talking about moving up to 130. Oh, I can't cross from I don't know if I can make the weight. They was already making, ready to make their next move to avoid this guy. I've never seen a guy clean out of the division as soon as he stepped into a division. Oh, no, I don't want to be his manager. I want to fight him. But nobody talk about it, though. All they want to talk about is the Lomachenko thing. And Lomachenko wouldn't even accommodate him. He had to give every advantage to Lomachenko. The weight, the gloves, the ring, the promotion, the money, the ref, the venue, the city. He ain't had shit in his favor. But don't nobody talk about that, though. Don't nobody else keep it a buck on that. Nobody. Oh, you know, he quit versus Lomachenko and, you know, he did this and that. Okay. You got to try to quit. These these four jokers didn't even try. And they still won't, they won't utter, they, they, they won't utter this man's name. And they household Rigondeaux, Grimmel Rigondeaux is probably banned. 
Them, 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 them names you can't mention. And Leo Santa Cruz is so fucking... Him and Frampton is so much the scum of the earth. They the most hoest boxers I've ever seen. Call them the hostess boxer crew. You know what I'm saying? And, and Abner Mars, pussy ass. He didn't want to run it back with Johnny Wong Gonzalez neither. Squad Quig a hoe too. All them ran. The hostess crew. The whole stitch crew. They all ran from Rick and Dial. But y'all just give Rick and Dial a, whole, a hard time. Boxing is crazy, man. Boxing is truly a different type of sport. Boxing is truly a different type of sport, though. Don't nobody say nothing. And when they had they did ring and die, nobody tell you tell you how they did ring and die. They just want to say, oh, yeah, you quit versus Lomachenko. You did all that talking. Yeah, because you got to sell the fight to make yourself marketable. When you can't get a fight, you mean you got to do something out the ordinary, out the box to provide, a living, to provide, to provide for your family, excuse me. You feel me? To provide for your family. He got to do something to put food on the table. You know? He got to do something to put food on his table. So he had to be a little bit outlandish. But these dudes, everything is handed to them because they ethnic background. Because they got a little bit of a fan following. They able to get away with all the ducking and all the pussy shit they did. But do you see Dan Rayfield, Stevie Kim, Doug Fisher talking about the whole shit that they do? Absolutely not. But as soon as Rick and Dow do some whole shit... And nobody say, you know what? At least Rick and Dow dared to be great. No, it was all that, oh, we can't stand Cuban boxing. It's always the fake-ass, fuck-ass old media boxing motherfuckers, man. It's always them. But when, when, when somebody they like pull some whole shit like Golovkin, oh, you know, they just, they just say some shit. Oh, you know what? I, I don't like the Vinyl's choice, though. But guess what? His Dan Rayfield fat ass to be right out there watching it, right? You know, they'd be out there trying to rationalize how great of a fight it was. You feel me? That's what they do. You know, Anthony Joshua blatantly ducked Eddie, uh, Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua blatantly ducked Deontay Wilder. He came out another video and said it, which I told you I want to go do another video on it. He came out and basically said exactly what I told you guys what the situation was, which was this. Why would I go risk it, risk making 26, 27, maybe 30 million at the most fighting Wilder when I can fight any old bum and make 20 million every time? Exactly what I told you. I've been telling y'all for six, seven months now. But guess what? You know, the haters gonna try to rationalize trying to rationalize the bullshit. And that's that's just what it is boxing is, dog. But do you see Dan Rayfield reporting that and going hard on that? Absolutely not. They sweep shit like that on the rug. But once you on that once you on that coincidental list and the list that they that, that they don't they, they don't like you. They don't like you or whatever it may be. Excuse me, mess with my dog. When they don't like you and you on a shit list or they don't want to fuck with you or whatever it may be, you know, then they, every little thing you do wrong or every little thing that you do is reported in a negative manner. It's real shit. Probably because Bob Arum and, and Oscar De La Hoya is probably paying most of their bills anyway. Put money right in their back pocket. But then it is what it is, dog. Like I told you guys, man. Everybody want to talk about the bullshit. Everybody want to talk about, you know, what the, what the media push. Oh, Rick and Dial ain't that good. You know, he quit. Yeah, he did. You know, I, I say I can't condone that. But like I said, you got to try to quit. And when these four jokers, they ain't try to fight that man. And still won't even say his name like Candyman. And won't. All they do is want, want a motherfucking love, you know, a love box to fight each other. I give a fuck if y'all fight each other. We all know y'all fucking garbage. Fight Gary Russell, he spank all of them. Fight Oscar Devaldez, he spank all of them. Rick and Dial coming off a loss. He probably still whoop all y'all asses. Coming off a loss the way he took, came off a loss and a long layoff, he'll fuck y'all up. I guarantee you it. He jumped up to be great. He tried to be great because you guys won't give him an opportunity. Y'all moved up from 22 to 26. He said he's moving to 26. It was worried. Oh, we moving up to 30. I don't know how much I can make the weight. But the fans don't talk about that, though. They don't talk about the whole shit. And that's why you got fighters that don't take risks because it's no pressure to take a risk. Because you take a risk and you lose, then people don't talk about you. If you just continue to avoid the risk and have a bullshit career and a padded record, you know, you're still going to be loved. But how they did Rick and I was criminal. How they did was criminal. Nobody going to talk about it. Hung him on the shelf. Only made 500 k All that shit. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, though, man. 
Ain't nobody gonna criticize the real bitches of, 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 of boxing, the real hoe ass motherfuckers, the hostess crew of boxing. And I don't miss no words, bro. Leo Santa Cruz is one boxer I can't fucking stand. He's the most overrated, scariest bitch ass motherfucker out there. But y'all know what it is. TVC and more. We.